What's going on guys? So this week I wanted to talk about something that has always bothered me a little bit and that's the the requirements and the process to land a dev job, specifically your first dev job. And many people including myself think that a lot of the hiring process is unreasonable and just not efficient in finding the right people or giving the right people the ch a chance. Uh, I understand that a lot of companies, you know, of course they don't want underqualified developers. However, I think that some of the stuff that we're required to go through to get hired and what we're expected to know is not only unreasonable, but not really relevant to the actual tasks that that job requires. So what I would like to do in this video is just highlight some of the things that I think are problematic and then offer, uh, I, I guess, an alternative for the hiring process that not only helps developers get jobs that are the jobs they want, but also helps the company find the right people for the right job. And I do want to say that um, there will probably will be a bunch of you guys that disagree with me, and that's absolutely fine. Feel free to state your opinion in the comments. Everyone is welcome to their own opinion, and this is just mine. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so first off, I know that not all companies have the same hiring process, but uh, a lot of them are very similar when it comes to, you know, the whole whiteboard interview thing. And I do have uh, just a beef with, with the actual types of questions or problems that are proposed during the interview process. Um, a lot of uh, interview questions, they have to do with like theory and have you completing really difficult problems that you wouldn't typically see in the real world. And I get that they're trying to see your ability to solve problems. I understand that. But I think instead of having them do, you know, some random computer science problem, they should do something that is more relevant to the actual position. And I'll, I'll, I'll talk more about that in my proposal. But more so than the problems themselves um, or the questions that are asked, I think the bigger issue is having them do it on the spot. And there's a couple reasons why I think why I think that's an issue. So one of the biggest skills to, to master to become a great developer is the ability to, to research. You know, if I'm hiring someone, uh, I want them to be a professional Google searcher. That's, that's just reality. We can't keep everything in our heads and we shouldn't be expected to. So the need to, uh, to, the need to have the skills to research specific syntax and stuff like that is essential. And I think a lot of companies aren't testing your research ability. You know, they're treating programming like we're in some second grade math class and we're trying to use a calculator, like it's cheating. And I think that needs to change. You know, what company would actually say in the real world that you can't use tools to research? You know, you have to do it all from your head. That's just silly. It's not, it's not reality. Um, so that's one thing. And then uh, another part of it is just being put on the spot, which can be, you know, mental torture and anxiety for us, for some of us, you know, a lot of programmers, including myself, we already have that, that imposter syndrome, that social anxiety. Um, at least for me, I know when, when I'm put on the spot and I don't, I, I, and I can't have time to research or anything like that. I, I don't even show a fraction of my full potential. You know, I thrive when I'm by myself. I have the ability to research. I'm not stressed. I can take my time and test, try certain things out. So I think that companies are doing themselves a disservice by, by forcing people to solve these problems on the spot. You know, I think another problem is the ridiculous tech requirements when it comes to even a junior developer position. Uh, I saw a tweet from someone that I follow and, and he showed a job listing for a junior dev position and the requirements for what you need to know is just ridiculous. You know, to me, this is not a junior developer position. What this is, is a mid to senior position from a company that wants to pay you as a junior developer. And that just, it really pisses me off. You know, this stuff isn't easy. And if someone puts the time and effort into learning all this and they're willing to work for you, then pay them what they deserve. You know, this is one of the reasons why I just, I hate the industry itself and I'll never work for anyone else's company. Uh, unfortunately, not everyone has that luxury and people do want to work for companies. So I think that a junior is supposed to have some fundamental basic knowledge, but then they learn a lot on the job. You know, working in the real world is how people learn best and employers should know that. 
Um, the last problem that I have is the weight that a college degree holds. And I think it should be looked at, of course, because I think that it is a great accomplishment, you know, but there's too many listings that say things like bachelor's degree required. And by the way, if you do have a de- if you don't have a degree and you want to apply to a job, apply to it even if it does say that. So with that said, I want to propose what I think the process should look like when hiring developers and, and what I would do personally. So first off, you need to talk to the candidate, you know, not just throw some problem at them. I think you should ask them about their experiences, um, why they learned to code, what they would like to accomplish. This will tell you how passionate they are. And even if they don't fit all the technical requirements, you know that they're not only willing to learn, but they have an urge to learn and, and improve. You know, I'd rather have someone that is truly passionate and hungry to learn over someone that can solve some riddle. You know, um, next, I would look at their personal projects, uh, ask them to show you their their GitHub por- uh, profile, their portfolio, maybe pick out one or two projects and, and tell you why they're proud of it. This will give you a good look at their skills. Um, I honestly think that having a great GitHub profile or great portfolio is even better than having a bachelor's degree. You know, sure, a degree shows that you can sit through a class and not fail, but your GitHub or, or your portfolio, it shows that you can actually build and maintain projects and you can do real world work. All right. So next, I would completely do away with pulling out a whiteboard and creating a, you know, having them do some computer science algorithm to save the planet from pollution and, and making you do it in 30 seconds. You know, that's not a good way to see someone's skill. And personally, I would fail most of these things because I just simply don't work well when I feel watched and judged. So what I would suggest is a relatively simple project that they can take home using whatever technologies the job entails. Let's say uh, if it's a position where they'll be using React, Redux, maybe SQLize, MySQL, um, and then give them a project that uses those technologies and have them come back, go over the project, ask any questions um, about their code and their approach. I think this is a much more relevant way to test them rather than the the whiteboard crap. You can see how they'll perform on the job. And even if the person couldn't finish the project, don't let that be an automatic fail. Give them a chance to explain their work and, um, you know, what they struggled with, what they had issues with. This will give you more insight into their whole thought process. Now, as far as college degrees go, again, I think it should be considered as it is a great accomplishment, but so should any type of boot camp or a program that the applicant completed. Um, For self-taught devs, I'd say maybe ask them, you know, what's their process for learning? Do they use video courses? How often do they utilize documentation? Uh, What books have they read, et cetera? Just get an idea of, of where their education came from if they didn't attend college you know, but give them just as much of a chance. Uh, I understand that the process that I'm I'm proposing may take more time than the current one because you really do have to talk to the applicants a little more, but I think it'll be more efficient when it comes to finding good developers that can do the job. And I think that both the applicants and the companies will benefit from this, you know. So that's my opinion on the subject. Let me know if you agree or disagree and you know, what, uh, what you think the best process for hiring new developers should be. But that's it, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.